In America, 2021 has been the year of the Great Resignation, otherwise known as the Big Quit. Millions of Americans are leaving their jobs, over 4 million every month at the moment. It seems the pandemic has led many to rethink what they need and what they want from a job. Michelle Fleury travelled to Kentucky, where people are quitting at a higher rate than in many other states. Alex Carter hit his breaking point last year. The former bank manager grew tired of dealing with bad behaviour from customers during the pandemic. The attitudes of the people who come in and don't want to follow the rules and want to yell at you about why they don't feel they need to, you can only take so much of that. We all know that the pandemic has changed our workplaces. It's a statement that's repeated so often that it's almost lost all meaning. As business owners or managers have been struggling with supply chains, rolling lockdowns, restrictions, and rising prices of just about everything, many are also struggling with massive labor shortages. It's been dubbed the Great Resignation, and while it's impacting America at an alarming rate, Canada hasn't escaped unscathed either. In fact, this video from the BBC is just one example of how the Great Resignation is, become, is starting to affect all types of jobs. Now, you may have heard the term anti-work. There have been news articles, television segments, and growing online communities discussing the term. Now, it can be really tempting for us to just completely disregard anything related to anti-work based on the name alone. However, I'm going to urge you to stick with me for a few minutes. On the anti-work subreddit, uh, for example, there's over 1.6 million subscribers. And like any grassroots organization, uh, anti-work encompasses a wide spectrum of beliefs. There's certainly people on there who believe that all forms of work should be abolished, although how that would actually work is often less clear. But there's also a huge number of people who are just absolutely fed up with the status quo. For many growing up, we've been told that if you work hard, if you get good grades, you go to university and put in your time, you are going to be successful. You'll be able to afford a house in the suburbs, two cars in the yard, family vacations, retirement savings, and all the other perks that are supposed to accompany successful, hardworking individuals. The reality for, most, for many people, or most people, is crushing student debt entry-level positions that require three to five years experience and pay minimum wage, home prices that have absolutely crushed the dream of any type of home ownership. And for many young people, it's all while watching income inequality just soar throughout the pandemic. It's like the analogy of frog in boiling water. Now for decades, we've been turning up the heat slowly in our workplaces. Wages have stagnated which causes the temperature to rise. Job security has all but disappeared, raising the temperature a bit more. Workers are increasingly treated like a commodity, which is causing the water to heat up again. And inequality has increased, again, increasing the temperature. Then COVID hit, and we were all pulled out of the workplace, pulled out of the boiling water, and it gave people an opportunity to look at just how dangerously hot the water had gotten. Employers have been asking people to jump right back into the pot without realizing that the status quo is dangerously hot. Now, all analogies break down at some point. And what I really want to share with you is that expectations have changed. And unless you're willing to change with them, you're going to continue to experience high turnover. You're going to have trouble filling vacancies. You're going to have high levels of job dissatisfaction and huge amounts of disengagement and presenteeism. There is an answer here though, and it's not merely about paying people more money. We need to understand that the factors that contribute to job dissatisfaction, and we need to understand how the expectations around work have changed. So we've got a video that goes into detail of what we call the seven by three rule. But simply put, the seven factors that contribute to job dissatisfaction are compensation, wellness, company policies, working conditions, safety, job security, and consistency. And these seven factors need to be understood through the lens of the three expectations of your workforce. These seven factors need to be competitive within your industry, sector, or geography. They need to be sufficient 
to accomplish the task. So if we're talking about wellness, for example, an annual pizza party or a foosball table in the break room, not going to cut it. And they need to be equitably applied to everyone. This is not a golden bullet that's going to fix everything overnight. Many, work, many people are becoming more and more distrustful of the promises made by employers. But if you want to create a workplace culture that can attract and retain talent, this is where you start. So tying this all back to the question at the start, what is anti-work and why should you care? Well, anti-work is a reaction to the factors of our workplace being completely out of sync with worker expectations. The conditions have been getting increasingly difficult over time. And we're at a point now where millions of people are quitting their jobs. And if you fail to react to the new expectations by using the seven by three rule to address job dissatisfaction, you are operating on borrowed time. Click to subscribe to stay up to date as we will be publishing many more videos that will talk about how you can improve your workplace culture. Thanks for tuning in.